Hi, Adam here. I've been thinking a little bit about salary surveys and market rate. I was just going to take a little walk and if you come with me, then we can have a little chat about it together. So, when we want to pay people, we want to pay them fairly, don't we? And how do we know what's fair? Well, the most common way to do so is to take a little look at the external market and look into a salary survey. Now, salary surveys pretty much all work on the same principle. You describe a job in terms of its duties, the sort of the area of the business that it looks after, and then you try to describe the size of the role. You know, um, how much responsibility does it have? How much resource is committed to it? So that way, with these two different things, you've got uh, the breadth of the job, like what is it focusing on? What does it do? And then you've got how big is it? How much is it responsible? How much does it look after? How much expertise is involved? Now, with these two bits of information, what you do is you create something that are called buckets. So you put all your information into the survey, into that bucket, and then you give it to a survey provider. They mix all of it up together and they put it in with all of the other companies that have submitted data. And therefore you have similar size jobs doing a similar kind of activity and you've got your survey market data. So, so far, so good. You've got market data. But here's the problem. Do you? Now, you may have heard the key part of this was that you put in your data and the survey companies mix it up with all of the other companies who have put data in. And therein lies the fundamental problem. Salary surveys are ultimately a small part of the overall market. They're self-selected. What you're gonna see is data from companies who've chosen to participate. And that's not really quite the same thing as the whole market. Now, often when I'm asked to benchmark a role, uh, a brand new role that we've got and that people are interested in knowing more about, I'm asked about certain com companies, certain competitors. And I'll tell you now, to be honest, over the years, if I've ever managed to have more than about a third of the companies that they name in the actual survey sample, I count myself pretty lucky. So immediately, we've got a limited size population. We don't have the whole market. In fact, we don't even have necessarily the majority of companies that you're interested in. So what do we have? Well, even the biggest surveys that cover million employees or more are still only covering a million employees or more. There are millions, tens of millions of people in employment in the UK, and we only have a fraction of them in salary survey data. And the same goes for companies. A majority of large companies will be in a survey of some description, but again, it's only a small proportion of the overall number of companies. So, we've got our surveys, we've got our buckets of people doing similar jobs, but we don't have that many as a percentage of the overall market. So we're missing a big chunk of people. But this could be representative, yeah? So, let's assume it's representative, it's what we've got. Now, a little secret that, you know, isn't terribly uh, well discussed. When it comes to putting your data into salary surveys, this is not a priority job for most HR people. Now, I've worked with quite a lot of companies as a consultant and as a reward professional. And the one thing that you find is that quite often it is the most junior member of the team who is putting their data into the survey. You can probably work out that if you're the most junior member of the team, you probably don't have the most expertise with the actual survey. And as such, even though every survey has a job matching methodology that helps explain how it works and how you put your data in, it's often being used by people using it for the first time. Now, Again, it's a large survey, we've got a large amount of information and, you know, it's not everyone. Some companies put a huge amount of effort into it, they use consultants like myself in the past and we come in and we do a, banging up job, do a bang up job of it. But the problem is the quality of the data that you have in each of these buckets. Now, when we put survey data out, often we talk about the median, the midpoint, the middle earner. 
And sometimes we'll talk about a range. We'll talk about the quartile range from the lower quartile, which is the person a quarter of the way through the sample. And the upper quartile, the person three quarters of the way through. Simple enough. That's half of the population, and that gives a pretty big range. That's normally about 10 or 15% either side of the, uh, the median sample, that middle learner. But the thing is, when you get survey data, you have access to more. You can actually see what are called the deciles. So the lower decile, the person who is 10% into the sample, and the upper decile, the person who is 90% through the sample. And the thing is, that person at 90% usually pretty much earns twice that of the person at the lower decile. Now, I don't know about you, but if I saw two people, one earned twice as much as the other, and you asked me, do you think they are doing the same job with a similar size of accountability and resource? I would have to say the majority of the times my answer is going to be no. That doesn't really make intuitive sense. And therein lies some of that discrepancy, some of that, that judgment that people are applying in a, putting their data into the survey. So, we're the best will in the world. We're talking about market data but we're not. What we're talking about is survey data, which is companies that choose to participate in a survey using the same methodology and trying to put in their information as best they can. From this survey, you can then take a look and you can pull out information which will help inform your salary de decision making. But, and here's the important part, it's not the truth. When it comes to salary surveys and pay benchmarking, there isn't market data. There is no such thing as the definitive truth. And it's very important to remember that. Don't get me wrong. I'm a reward professional and <laughs> I'm not telling you to quit your benchmarking and just start making it up. This information is useful, but the thing is only as a data source. So it's a data point. It gives you insight into the true situation but it doesn't give you the truth. In fairness, the largest surveys are fantastic. They've got huge amounts of data in there. We look at that middle portion because that should be the portion where the majority of people really are doing the same job. And we can ignore those outliers at one side and the other. And by using this data, we can therefore help inform decision-making, but it will never be market data. It will never be 100% the truth. So, remember, reward is in fact an art, not a science, and it needs interpretation. So, thank you very much for joining me on my little walk today. I talked a little bit about salary surveys and market data. Alright, bye.